So basically Venice, the Venetian Republic, um, again, it's based on trade. Many of the, the very um, important civilizations, they, they came to the fore based on trade. Um, Venice has a particular situation, it's in the heart of a lagoon. The island is not just one island, the Venetian um, archipelago, there's several islands within it, but we have the main island of Venice, which most people kind of associate with Venice. It's very spectacular. primarily for defence because obviously if you're on an island in the middle of a lagoon it's much easier perhaps to defend uh, if people are you know coming in to attack you and over a period of time um, with the wealth that had accumulated they eventually had a doge who was uh, kind of the ruler he tended to be um, promoted to the position of doge when they were in the, the latter years of their life. So you would not get a doge, for instance, who would rule for 50 or 60 years or something like that. Their, their term of rule was usually uh, pretty short. And of course, the Venetian uh, culture, particularly the architecture, has influenced many areas, particularly around the Balkans. Um, so you do find Venetian architecture in, in Greece, some of the Greek islands, also in the likes of Croatia, for instance, um, uh, Montenegro, you do find the, the Venetian influence there because they had various outposts for trade throughout the Adriatic um, area of um, the Mediterranean. So uh, basically the main highlights when people first, if they first go to Venice, tends to be based around St Mark's Square. That tends to be the focal point. So within St Mark's Square you have the Campanile, which is a tall bell tower, but it's not the only bell tower in Venice. You'll find several of the bell towers, you'll see them on the horizon as we sail through. You have the magnificent St Mark's Basilica, which houses the remains of St Mark. Uh, which were smuggled out of Alexandria in a vat of a pork fat to evade the eyes of the, uh, the Muslim's customs officer. The reason why his bones were brought to Venice because of course it was very wealthy and it wanted to have a very influential or important saint as their patron saint, so that's the reason. They only took the body, not the head. The head actually remained in Alexandria, it's, as it's disappeared now, they don't know where it's gone, but it was in Alexandria for a long period of time, so it's just the body of St Mark that's actually housed inside the basilica. Originally it was housed inside the Doge's Palace, which is right next door to the Basilica. So that was the palatial palace, which was the courts of justice. It would have been the home of the Doge. The prison was there as well. And then they had to build the Basilica to accommodate the bones of St. Mark. So those three structures are basically in St. Mark's Square. And of course, there's a lot of history related to the Doge's Palace. Uh, because of the prison, many people would walk across the famous Bridge of Sighs which had its name because there are a few tiny slit windows in it. It was the last view that most prisoners ever got of the outside world, so they would have lost their lives incarcerated within that prison. <music> One of 
One of the most famous prisoners that was ever held there was Casanova. He managed to escape. He was aided by a kind of renegade monk, but he managed to escape from the prison um, in the palace. So yeah, there's a lot of history, and if you do get a chance to go in the Doge's palace, it's fascinating to actually see. Of course, you also have a gondola station, which is just uh, at St. Mark's Square, bordering on the, the mouth of the top of the Grand Canal, because the Grand Canal runs from more or less St. Mark's Square all the way down to uh, Piazzale Roma, which is the main land bus station for Venice, because taxis, regular taxis and buses, can only go so far on Venice Island. The only other way to get around is to walk or to take some waterborne form of transportation. It's a real popular thing to do this gondola ride. I've never done it, um, but of course, you know, most people do like to have this romantic serenade and cruise along through the water channels of Venice. And yeah, there's something special about that, I guess. Venice is a place that you really need to lose yourself in. The best way to enjoy Venice is to get lost in Venice because you come across things, unexpected sights, that if you were trying to find them, you probably never would. Um, and it, although there are signs on the walls directing you to various different places, such as the Rialto Bridge or St. Mark's Square or the main railway station, you can still get yourself lost within Venice very, very easily. But it's a great walking city. I find that's the best way to enjoy it, is really to walk around Venice. <laughs>